Everyone, how are you? I hope you are safe. I hope you are taking care of yourself. Precautions are in check. We are in the middle of this crazy pandemic. At the same time, life goes on as well. So let's make sure that we are as precautious, kindful, and at the same time, mindful as well. I hope you are having a very nice Saturday. Uh, usually, we do this on a Sunday, but it's we couldn't wait because we were so very excited about this particular webinar that we are about to have right now. Uh, welcome, one and all. It's good to see you here. This is me, Sri Ram Sulia, your host for Vibe City Bangalore. We have some amazing guests who we've been interacting with over the last few weeks. Uh, we continue to do so with few more exciting episodes and webinars. Uh, the episode that we are currently going to be dwelling on today is about home gardening and who better than one of the most renowned landscape architects to take us through this. Well, this man is multi-talented. He has so many facets to him. Um, Middle East connection, he was in Dubai for many, many years. I'm so very happy that he is in Namma Bengaluru city and he's definitely responsible for so many indigenous plants and so many indigenous vegetation that continues to live and prosper. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the seed man of India. We have Dr. Prabhakar Rao. Hi, Dr. Prabhakar. How are you? Hi. Hi, Sridham. So lovely to be with you guys again. <laughs> well, uh, doctor, tell us a little bit about yourself because um, it's tough to encapsulate what all you do. Um, you currently are involved with so many interesting projects and then we'll talk about home gardening and everything to it. Well, I like to describe myself as a seed keeper. Yeah. Okay. Seed and keeper. Uh, a seed keeper is a person who preserves whatever biodiversity there is left. And I specialize in vegetables, nati vegetables, indigenous vegetables. And I have been working for many years now trying to prevent indigenous vegetables from becoming extinct. I have uh, worked with at least about 600 varieties of vegetables whose seeds I managed to lay my hands on. And out of that, I've been able to stabilize now around 200 vegetables, which I now multiply. I put it online for people to uh, share with me and uh, st I've stabilized them. It takes about three to four years to stabilize them genetically and environmentally. And uh, I mean, that's it's it's now my driving passion, you know, to to make sure that whatever uh, varieties of nati vegetables, desi vegetables we have, we yeah. should preserve. Lovely. Talk to me about the inception of Haryali farms and how Haryali came to be. Yeah, so Haryali, you see, I my professional career has that been of an architect who has been specialized in landscape architecture. And uh, I used to have my consultancy based out of Dubai, where I was there for more than 20 years. And uh, a large part of my uh, professional uh, career happened to be as a personal designer for landscape architecture for His Highness the Aga Khan, who has projects all over the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me to travel to very remote parts of the world. And what fascinated me was that in these remote areas, you would somehow stumble upon one or two varieties of vegetables, which you would never have seen in your life, whether it was Africa or Mongolia or Central Asia or Far East or Europe, or anywhere it would be very, very remote areas where we would find this. So that actually started my quest to find out what had happened to the, all these vegetables, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came back in 2011, uh, 2011, I uh, got actually uh, the permission, if you have to say, but I got the blessing of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, uh, for whom I do my social service, Seva. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, you can now come back to India. And quickly, uh, me and my family packed up and we came back. And from then, I have been, uh, you know, developing my farm. It was a piece of land that was there for me for a long time. But now I developed it. And this is where I uh, not only grow the seeds, I test the seeds, I multiply the seeds, and I uh, share these seeds with people. So this is Haryali, and it started in 2011. 
and now you know it's about yeah nine years old but effectively the seed multiplication started only about six seven years ago right well um if you ever get an opportunity i would say just log on to dr prabhakar rao's website and make a visit to aditi farms haryali farms because it is a unique experience like never before and um, my mind was blown um, about the kind of fruits and vegetables that i got to see i i couldn't believe my eyes that we got to see some red corn we got to see purple okra and all these are indigenous now dr prabhakar let's talk about how in today's world it's becoming all the more important to grow indigenous fruits and vegetables and do it by yourself a diy do it yourself um, it's becoming all the more important why exactly is that see somewhere in our evolution because of urbanization and the shift of families from uh, you know joint family to nuclear families and our lifestyle of moving away from uh, bungalows to apartments one of the things that actually suffered was this disconnect with growing things mm. somehow you know it just sort of slipped away but what you realize shriram is when you are with a plant even if it's one pot at plant in your balcony if you're growing one tomato in your balcony the connection that you will make with that plant it's not a very simple connection yeah. you know when you grow something you're triggering something in your reptilian cortex it's what your ancestors did for tens of thousands of years yeah and when you do it and especially if you do it the way they did it mm -hmm. with the techniques of natural farming for us for example through vedic agriculture if yeah. you grow something using vedic agriculture techniques it becomes a sort of a meditative experience yeah. and when you finally take that fruit from that plant and you put it into your mouth or you cook it it becomes an extremely rewarding experience and it is an addictive thing once you will start growing something you will never stop it's only that first step of doing it once once you do it it's an addiction you will find some new seeds you will go to your friends you will pick up something you will start growing and you will be amazed that this little balcony of yours which you thought was no good for anything it will become a menagerie of plants absolute greenhouse you will make out of it and this has been the experience of so many of home gardeners who have started with a baby step but ended up you know really experiencing that connect with nature that's so and, true yeah yeah, yeah. go ahead um I, i especially off late right we've been spending so much of time at home we see uh, instagram posts we see stories of people putting up pictures of the tiny tomatoes that are growing in their home gardens and you're right there is a cathartic connection there is a very very uh, therapeutic connection to gardening uh, and people find it very very calming people actually talk to their plants all the time uh, and you got to begin somewhere or another uh, so doctor um, sorry to in interrupt um, but um, people is there a particular kind of plant that you would recommend for beginners when it comes to home gardening person uh, yes i mean first of all as a classification i would say start with native desi varieties because mm -hmm. desi varieties are naughty they mm -hmm. are like a street dog very hardy yeah. you know yeah. very difficult to kill them yeah so first is don't go in for all these hybrids and gmos and all that they are all very delicate they are like your pedigree chihuahua dog you know i mean yeah. you you, know, you need to really look after that you know take a naughty one you know and a naughty one will be very hardy and as starters suppose you've never done gardening at all you know then like um home gardening uh, for dummies 1.0 these are the things i would say start with okras bindis mm. huh? mm. this is one of the easiest things to grow yeah and it grows very fast and you can harvest some lovely bindis uh, you tasted some of the bindis raw in my farm i remember you really yeah. enjoyed them yeah and so bindis are like for me okras are like very sure shots because 
you can actually get away with a lot of you know uh, slip uh, slip shot not slip shot but you know even if you're just in the uh, work in progress and you're learning a yeah. few mistakes here and there will not and harm a bindi plan still you so will be able to bear the you will still get you will still get bindis that's what yeah. i'm saying after that you can start to graduate to the brinjal family brinjal family is basically tomatoes brinjals and chilies these mm -hmm. are the main uh, uh, crops that you can start for this you have to learn how to make seedlings yeah. you know okras even without a seedling you can get away with it yeah. but these you will have to make seedlings and then you can go on to the little more like you get into the beans and then you get into all the gourds all the cucurbits you know like the bitter gourds and cucumbers and pumpkins and all that so it's it's a gradual progression but trust me you start with a bindi you will never stop <laughs> i bet i bet i mean it's such a beautiful process overall and um, when we were at your farm you not just introduced us to natural farming and how it's different from organic farming in fact we have so many questions that are pouring in guys you can actually post your questions on the discuss tab just have your questions put in there and in just a few moments we are going to come down to answering the questions that you've got there so we'd want this to be as interactive as possible and at the same time there is definitely the shop tab where we, you can actually get yourself an indigenous seeds combo kit you just need to hit on the shop tab and hit on i am interested and you'll find all the details about what this kit contains and how you can go about it how it's going to be sent to you and how you can start your own little garden in your living room space um if you have a garden even if you are living in an apartment and you'll need to start off somewhere or another now uh, dr prabhakar um we see some of the top chefs uh talking about the producing their own uh fruits and vegetables we see some of the most noted names saying that it's very important that we don't rely on uh the outside world to get your fruits and vegetables because one way or another things seem to be adulterated um is it true uh the fruits and vegetables that we actually are consuming how safe is it this is a scary question yes it's a very scary question because if i have to tell you the truth it's very shocking mm -hmm. you know in the art of living agriculture trust where i do my social voluntary work as a trustee there i we got uh, vegetables from seven mandis around bangalore we sent it to mysore and cftri and we told them to analyze it for pesticide residues shridam the pesticide residues were 3000 x about the maximum permissible limit yeah maximum residue limit mrl if mrl is x what he found in those vegetables was 3000 x yeah so it is shocking so a lot of chefs especially when they are using food a vegetable that is not going to be cooked too much like salads or very gentle stir fries where it's almost as a fresh farm to yeah. table as you can get yeah there they would like to grow it under their eyes because then they know that there are no residues in this there are no chemicals in this and what they will be serving the their guests would be genuinely chemical free produce genuine uh, chemical free food apart from that the chefs know the taste mm. when you grow food without chemicals you tasted a lot of things in my farm yeah. there is no it's not a patch against what you will find in the market you know absolutely yeah. no patch so that is why i would say everybody should start growing something you know you make a start somewhere you know yeah yeah there you go that's that's decent enough advice uh, in fact um, sir you actually hold workshops uh, where people can come to your farm and spend a day uh, can you tell us a little bit about how one can go about that yeah so i mean before covid every second sunday of a month i would have a curated farm visit where people would come from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock 10 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon i would take them for a round around the farm to see whatever was there in that particular season like i took you around yeah. and then i would come back and then uh, in the farmhouse i i would give them a 
lecture demonstration of the natural farming, Vedic agriculture. And, you know, we make a few things like Jeevamrita, Gana Jeevamrita and things like that. And we show people how to do a seed tray, how to make seedlings, how to pot and, you know, all these things. So this is what I used to do. Now, since COVID, my farm is under shutdown. Hopefully by October, I will start this, revive this. So I would request, uh, uh, you know, people who would like to just send me uh, uh, their details so that I can log them in uh, because we have limited numbers. So uh, I will I will log them in and keep them. So whenever I open, you know, we can uh, announce it, uh, uh, you know, they can come and attend the workshop. But I think till at least October, I am very sure that I am not opening the, the farm to visitors. But after that, hopefully. Can you tell us the website, doctor? The website is www.hariyaliseeds.com. Yeah. Hariyali is H-A-R-I-Y-A-L-E-E. Hariyali Seeds, one word, dot com. Right. I'd say uh, try logging on to the website and just scrolling around. You'll get a complete picture of this workshop and uh, a little journey about this farm, uh, Haryali farm, Aditi farm and uh, doctor's journey as well. It's very, very fascinating. And I'd say this uh, visit is a must do because uh, it blows your mind. Trust me, it blows your mind. Uh, Sir here has got vegetables from across the world. So many Japanese indigenous fruits and vegetables. I even tasted a jackfruit that was non-sticky. It blew my mind. It truly blew my mind. It was an amazing experience. We have plenty of questions that are coming in. Actually, we will be answering those questions. But guys, once again, to reiterate, uh, you can actually just hit the shop tab. And on the shop tab, you will see an indigenous seed combo kit. You will just need to hit the I am interested tab. And that's how you can buy these seeds that we are talking about. These are natural seeds. And uh, we'll discuss more about how these are different from other seeds that you uh, get that are available as well. But the shop tab, you just need to hit the shop tab and you will be able to pick up an indigenous seeds combo kit. It has five indigenous seeds. It has a seeding tray and it has a complete instruction manual on how you can go about uh, seeding and how you can take these baby steps towards gardening, which is so very important, like we discussed uh, Dr. Prabhakar Rao, what are some of the most common mistakes that people tend to do when it comes to home gardening? You have seen it all. Yes, I, I would say the biggest stumbling block for a newbie gardener is lack of patience. You mm. know, we expect nature to fast forward itself. So I've actually seen people plant a seed then every morning go and scoop out to see whether it's germinated. You okay. want it quickly for that Instagram picture. <laughs> exactly. So if you ask me, the first mantra in home gardening is let nature do what it knows, knows best. If you allow nature to do what it knows best, nature will do it because nature has got millions of years of ex experience. Okay. So best is to trust nature to do it and to trust that the seed will germinate, the seed will grow into a plant, the plant will flower, and the flower will give you a fruit or a vegetable. This is how nature is programmed. So if you trust nature, it will, it will all happen. It is only when we try to poke our fingers every day to find out, you know, I will see some people trying to train, uh, you know, trying to make sure that the leaf is, uh, you know, opening to that side or this side. Don't do all that. Nature knows how to do it. So that's the first one, that lack of patience, you know, wanting to fast forward things with uh, home gardening. That's yeah. our biggest mistake, I would say. Second is people don't realize that when you say soil, it means soil plus something home gardeners will use, which is called cocoa peat. Yeah? Mm -hmm. For home gardening, Cocoa peat, which is which you can order on Amazon, no issues. Cocoa peat, compost, soil. These three are primary ingredients. Even if compost is not there, compost should be there in home gardening because so right. much of fresh vegetable waste you, ha you have every day. So nothing better than to compost it. So compost, cocoa peat and soil. This mix is what you should use. 
so i see a lot of people you know they have a pot they put kemman red earth into that yeah. and they put a plant and that red earth has become like a brick you know and the plant is struggling no when you do home gardening the, plant, the soil has to be very light in depth okay second one third one more people kill plants by overwatering than underwatering okay yeah. people feel that any time they see the soil should the plant should be watered you know not like that if i feed you 24 hours a day you are not going to get healthier okay you have to feed me when i am feeling hungry so when the plant is thirsty you give it and even if you give it like in summers maybe twice a day but generally speaking in bangalore weather and things like that once a day is good enough yeah so this is again the mantra there is soil should be moist but not wet right it should be moist but not wet so right. if you take soil like this and you put it it should form a clump but the moment you touch that it should break right that is how you should keep the soil basic these two three things if you take care of nature will do everything else for you right i think uh, what you mentioned about being patient is so very important and what happens is someone gets into gardening with a whole lot of josh and the first time it's not a success they stop it right there um it's very important to find out what went wrong and come back to it probably with a little more patience of how one can go about it you can post your questions on the discuss tab we'll take as many questions as possible of course you can shop for these uh, multi combo seeds um on the shop tab just hit the shop tab and hit i am interested and you can pick up this um very very cool indigenous seeds combo kit i'd say this would be perfect for you to start gardening um just hit the shop tab and you can pick it up now time now for question and answers this one is from hitesh hitesh says can you elaborate the difference between organic and natural farming are they different mm. nice question but let me try to summarize it into very small capsule organic farming is all about using compost yeah and when you use compost you put into soil organic matter which increases the carbon content but if you see the process of composting it's a very heat generating process which means all the microbes die so it's a sterile fresh smelling mixture that comes out of your composting bin which you put into the soil and you do gardening with that it's good for home gardening it is very good mm -hmm. natural farming is based on vedic traditions where you take fresh cow dung with live microbes which are nutrient solubilizing microbes that along with the cow urine you make formulations like jeevamrita gana jeevamrita bijamrita panchagavi etc and you introduce live microbes into your soil so you are not worrying about carbon content and you are not worrying about your soil test report and all that you are putting live microbes and those microbes will do all the nutrient solubilizing and they will create that natural farming vedic tradition is all about doing what nature does like you go to a forest in malnad how is it nobody is putting urea nobody is spraying uh, chlorophyll phos there for pests and this and that everything is growing so beautifully how does that happen yeah. it happens because nature knows how to do it and it relies on microbes to do it so this tradition where you use live microbes into the soil is the vedic tradition also called natural farming where you use compost where no microbes are there but it increases the uh a uh, carbon content of the soil is organic farming for home gardening if you combine these two you've got an absolute win win situation lovely uh we have somebody asking where exactly is the farm it's on kanakpura road um it's not too far away from the city actually just about uh, uh, a short little drive and you'll reach the farm and uh, you get to breathe some really nice oxygen there uh, deepa has a question she's saying uh, what's the size of a pot for growing a red lady papaya can two saplings be planted together okay a lady papaya is a dwarf papaya mm. of course no doubt about it but still i will say that you need to take half a barrel i wouldn't even say a pot 
I would say like a drum, you get these oil drums, half a barrel. So you get similar grow bags, similar sized grow bags. You know, you, they are made out of uh, plastic, special plastic, and they are large. So the, the diameter itself is about two feet. Yeah. And it would be at least about two, two and a half feet depth. That will harbor a good uh, papaya for you. Lovely. This one is from Pre, and it's about uh, a sure way to grow coriander. Most attempts have failed, I believe. What is the sure way to grow coriander? So, first thing, you have to do something called the slipper treatment. Chapli mm. kelsa That means you have to take the coriander seeds, you take two sandals, two slippers, like Hawaii's chapels in your hands, and then you have to rub the two rub uh, together. slippers together. So what happens is, you see the dhania seed, if you put the round dhania seed in uh, soil, it doesn't germinate. It will remain like that. Maybe it will germinate after a couple of months, I don't know. But it doesn't germinate. So you have to split the seed. Then inside that, you will find that split thing is what you plant. Because inside that is the seed, actual seed, dhania seed. So first mistake people do is they put the dhania and wait for the dhania to come. Nothing comes. That's the first thing. Yeah. Second thing is that dhanias, once you once they start to grow, dhanias require at least about three to four hours of direct sunshine. Mm. You know, you many people think I'll grow dhania in, you know, in the balcony where I don't get direct sun. Dhanias don't grow too well. They just become lanky and they will fall and you will not get the patta, you will not get the leaves yeah. that you can actually put in your curry. Yeah? So, dhanias require direct sun. So, you have to first check whether you have that spot and sometimes this spot may be in summer, sometimes it may be in winter. But mm. wherever it is, give at least three to four hours of direct sun once the dhania starts growing and you will harvest excellent dhania at home. Right. I mean, it's a dream come true to just open your window and have some dhania right at... Uh the reach of an arm's length. But if there's no sunlight coming in, then uh, it may not be such a good idea. Uh, Shivani has an interesting question. Can we grow watermelon at home in a pot? <laughs> yes. If you have, see, all these uh, uh, creepers, you know, like pumpkins and watermelons and all this, you can grow. If you go on the 15th of August or the uh, 26th of January to the Republic show, uh, and the Independence Day in Lalbag, yeah, you will show. find in pot, yeah, the flower show, they will have in pots everything under the sun. Whether it is a jackfruit, whether it is a pumpkin, a watermelon, mask melon, everything. The trick there is, it is a little advanced stage of gardening because you have to understand what you're doing. First of all, a decent sized pot, like I said, half a barrel, that size. Yeah. Second, when you have to have uh, uh, bamboo sticks or something like that to support and allow that particular thing to uh, think. Like watermelon, it's a, it's a creeper, but it spreads on the ground. It requires a lot of area. In a small pot, how is it going to do that? So you have to train it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then the trick is you have to know that you can harvest max two or three watermelons only from that plant. Yeah? Right. So you have to pull out all the fresh flowers which are coming and leave only two or three to fruit. Then you will be able to get watermelon on your terrace. Please let us know how it goes uh, because this seems like a time-taking experiment, but we'd love to know and hopefully it bears the fruit. Uh, there's a question which is talking about, is it true that basil plant dies in winter? Uh, this person has planted it a month back. How do I save it is a question. Yeah. Basils generally do not like very cold weather. So if you have temperatures which drop below 10 degrees, like Bangalore, you'll never have a problem with basil. Summer, winter, it'll grow. No issues. But if you have basils, let's say in northern part of India, where temperatures plummet, quite a bit. Winter is not a good time for basils. So at that time, they will die. Okay. So the best way to keep those basils going 
is to protect them with a little greenhouse or hothouse or something like that so that you can tight that very very uh, sharp winter period but then it will again come back but in bangalore that's not a problem right right aman uh, anandeep has this question should we sow seeds directly or should we keep it overnight in water or in cow urine to have better germination see basically all seeds if you plant them in moist soil and you keep that soil moist like when you came to the farm i showed you how we use a sprayer to wet the seedling tray and i said that at least two to three times a day you should check whether it is moist or not yeah so if you keep it moist nothing like planting directly into the soil but into a seedling tray but if you are going to plant it directly into the uh, if you are trying to sprout it yeah you can do it but you know i would say sprouts you have to be a uh, at least a higher level gardener to do it because once you sprout the tip of the cotyledon or the uh, root is very very fragile if you don't know how to manage it there is a risk that you will incur in while planting it and damaging it yeah but if you are a good gardener and you know what you are doing actually sprout pre sprouting seeds is a wonderful way to do it but you should really know what you are doing it's not for the beginner right uh, so many more questions that are coming in we are sorry if we are not able to get to them uh, but we have a lot of like minded people all of them being part of this webinar uh doctor just uh, taking a cue of uh, from the coriander that was being tried to uh, plant in someone's balcony right um let's say if the a balcony a particular balcony isn't getting that much amount of sunlight um is there any particular plant that you would recommend would be best suited plenty mm -hmm. uh you have got mint for example does extremely well you know in a balcony which has got indirect light okay spinach palak is a good thing to try yeah then you have got plants like purslane yeah or the purslane it's the only uh, plant with this omega 3 fatty acid which normally is found in non veg food but this plant has it it's called the uh, purslane it's got a slightly holy taste you know sarte mm -hmm. not sarte it's a tangy taste beautiful salad plant you can grow that very well so you actually have a whole lot of leafy plants it's only the coriander that i don't recommend because you know uh, it needs sun but other things like you know rosemary you know uh, you can grow a lot of tulsi is also in 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 reasonable amount of uh, indirect sunshine yeah you can do that so um, actually you have a whole range of plants that you can grow in indirect light Uh, no right. doubt about that yeah right now let's get to the depth of uh, home gardening a lot of people want to know what exactly would be the right depth for the seeds to be sown and uh, depending upon the pot as well right people are saying that, that i have a 15 diameter uh, 12 inch height grow bag some people seem to have a smaller one is there a particular technique on what should be the depth of a seed see this is another one where lot of people don't know yeah and therefore it's all a hit or miss trial mm. but over my experience in vegetable gardening just because of the way that i am blessed to have tried out so many vegetables experiment with them and things like that i have found out a sort of a thumb rule that you can use even if you are a newbie gardener who has never planted okay take any seed and find out which is its widest side how much it is whether it's 1 mm 2 mm 5 mm or 10 mm you just find out whatever is that width of that okay then whatever that width is you have to multiply by 3 that will be the depth where you plant the seed regardless of the size of the pot you are using the depth is related to the size of the seed and it is 3x whatever is the largest width there is like for example let's take a watermelon seed it's about a centimeter the long side of it is about a centimeter so you would plant it 
three centimeters inside. A tomato, for example, it will be about two millimeters. So about half a centimeter to six millimeters, five to six millimeters would be the depth. Actually, if you use this mantra, uh, you will make yourself a great gardener. There you go. I hope uh, you're finding all of these tips very, very useful. Um, you can, of course, uh, just shop for uh, a few seeds from Haryali. Just hit the shop tab in case you're feeling inspired and you want to become a home gardener. Why not start now? Just hit the shop tab and you can pick up a multi-combo kit. It'll have five different natural varieties of seeds and it has a complete instruction manual on how you can go about it as well. So feel free to just hit the shop tab and pick up this multi-combo packet. You just need to hit on it and there is an I am interested tab. Just click on that. Um, doctor, this question is about bugs. What about bugs? Uh, my plants seem to be uh, getting eaten by bugs. Uh, should I use pesticides and how is that going to affect? Um, I didn't really want to use pesticides in the first place. Yeah. It's a good thing that you don't want to use the pesticides. So what happens is if you go to my YouTube channel, which is YouTube slash Prabhakar Rao, if you go to that channel, I have during this COVID period, I did a whole series of what I call Jugard Home Garden. Yeah. So if you have pests, uh, during this COVID period where you didn't have access to anything to control those pests, I had given a jugad. So if you take home gardening, there are six basic pest problems that you can uh, encounter. Mealy bugs, mites, spider mites, aphids. Then you have got uh, the snails and slugs. Yeah. Then you have got the, um, uh, the, the, the powdery mildew, which is basically mm -hmm. a fungus, okay? And uh, which is the one that I have mites, aphids, and white flies. Yeah, so these are the common, six common things. In my YouTube, I have got a jugard hack using the baking soda that you have at home. It works wonderfully. And uh, I would request you just go and in fact, uh, you could just go and look at that. It's a nice, uh, hardly about 20 minute video, which talks about not only how to control these six pests, but also the connection of these pests with ants. You know, ants farm these pests on your plants. If you keep a saucer of water and ensure that an ant won't get into the plant, these things will die by itself. Ants protect these and these mealybugs and mites and etc., they give uh, sugar syrup droplets to the ants. It's a very mm -hmm. intense symbiosis. And I have these videos which I have shown in that particular episode. So learning this interaction of ants with all these pests and how they too coexist and how if you take away one, the other will automatically disappear and how to use baking soda. Baking soda is a huge hack for home gardeners and uh, just watch that video it's so simple to uh, use it and you will gain a lot with that right monica has a interesting question it's how safe is plastic for growing plants i always take earthen pots please throw some light earthen pots are the best because more than anything they allow the soil to breathe yeah they allow the soil to breathe because the moisture can come seep out the oxygen can get in. And that's why if you see an earthen pot, the roots will be so beautifully stuck to the inside of the pot because the roots are actually breathing from there, you know. So earthen pots are like top notch. That would be as good as it gets. Now, but earthen pots have come with their own problems. They are not long lasting. It will be sooner or later, they will break. They are heavy, okay. So those are the downsides of it. If you can go for earthen pots, by all means, I would say keep that as your first preference. But if you don't have an option and you keep plastic pots, the plastic pot is not going to damage your plant. Plastic may have its imp impact on the environment and things like that, which we all know about, you know, plastic pollution and all that sort of thing. But as far as a plant is concerned, it will not kill the plant. That is for sure. Yeah. But if you have a 
plant in a plastic pot and an earthen pot, you will see the difference. The earthen pot is a win-win for a plant. Right. Uh, Rekha ji has a question and it's about Tulsi. Uh, I believe her Tulsi plant is growing only in rainy season and dies after that. What to do? And this is something that most households like to have as well, a Tulsi plant. So, you know, when a plant dies, when it has flowered and seeded, the moment seeds appear in the plant, the plant gets the message, my life is now over. I have fulfilled whatever reason I came to this planet. I have made my seed. Now it is my time to go. So Tulsi lovers, what they do, especially if you have the traditional Tulsi katte in, in the courtyard of our house, which mm -hmm. all of us growing as kids, we had our grandmother come and do the Tulsi puja every morning in the Tulsi katte. So there what the, my grandmother used to do is, she will carefully pick out, the moment it starts to flower, she'll pick out all the flowers. So the plant continues to grow because it's not fulfilled its purpose in life. So mm -hmm. till such time it produces seed, it will continue to grow. And every day my, my grandmother would harvest the leaves, put it in the tirtam, and you know, do the pujas and everything. And the plant would be fooled to thinking that it's actually a perennial. So it will go on. I have seen one Tulsi plant go on for like two, three years. It won't die. But the moment you allow a Tulsi to seed, it will die. Right, right. I hope that answered your question, Rekhaji. Uh, Shalni has a question about, can we grow mango, jamun and lychee in a pot? We uh, took a question, similar question about watermelons and that most certainly can. What about mangoes, lychees and jamuns? Yeah. So, I mean, again, restriction of this volume of soil is there but you if you have a big enough barrel you know and you keep the plant small so you do a lot of pruning you carefully cultivate so that you know it's like a little bit of a bonsai -ish kind of a thing and it'll still give you two three fruits a year yeah for sure lovely uh ramesh says my bottle guard uh wine fruits are rotting on early stage even after the successful pollination how can this be controlled without any chemicals? Yeah. So a lot of these cucumber plants, this cucumber family plants, they will produce fruit and then the fruit will drop. Okay. It is because although the pollination has happened and many a time people go and pollinate it. Yeah. Mm. What they don't understand is till the plant has reached a certain vegetative growth, the plant will not allow a vegetable to fruit and mature on it. Even if pollination happens, after a little time, it will drop. Nothing wrong with the plant. It's like saying a 13-year-old child, uh, can she bear a child? Nature doesn't want a 13-year-old to bear a child. It wants the child to wait till she is 18, right? Yeah. So similarly, plant decides and knows when it can bear the vegetable. That's why patience. So the same thing, you just don't do anything. Leave it. After a couple of weeks, beautiful bitter gourds will start coming. Beautiful bottle gourds will start coming. Pumpkins will start coming. But the first flush of fruits or vegetables on this, they will drop. It's right. nature's way of saying I'm not ready. There you go. I hope that answered your question. Guys, uh, for everyone who is joining us right now, um, if you just hit the shop tab, you will find an indigenous seeds combo kit that you can um, just have it with you and you can actually start planting. It has a kit which contains five indigenous seeds. It comes with a seeding tray. It has digital videos as well as to how you can go about it. It's all thanks to Dr. Prabhakar Rao's uh, uh, farm and where he produces these seeds as well. Uh, Dr. Prabhakar Rao, a lot of people want to know the soil to um, the soil to seed ratio uh, and how much of soil needs to be there in each pot. If you could just elaborate on that. Um, trick question, because it depends on the variety that you're growing. Suppose you are wanting to draw, grow a mango plant, for example, just an extreme example. Mm -hmm. You need a pot of that size, right? So uh, probably the question might have been that in a pot, how many seeds can you plant? That right. perhaps may be a question. 
Now, it again depends on what particular plant you're growing. Like suppose you're growing tomatoes. Normally, it is customary for people to put two to three seeds because, okay, maybe one won't germinate, two won't germinate, but at least the third one will germinate. And even if three germinate, they will pluck out one or two so that they will have one plant. Ideally, in home gardening, one healthy plant per pot is what you should aim for. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then you have a success model. If you have multiple plants in a small pot, what happens is they start to compete with each other. When they compete with each other, neither is benefited. Yeah. So it's always good to have, you just think in the field, how much space would that brinjal require? It would require quite a bit of space, right? At least like two feet by two feet or something like that. It'll require that much of space. You're not giving that much, but at least give it one pot, no? Right, right. Uh, doctor, we have uh, a few more questions that are coming in as well. A lot of people want to know when it comes to transferring of plants. Um, we seem to lose a lot of plants in that process, putting it yeah. from one pot to another. Uh, how can one be careful? Yes. So, trans see, repotting. Yeah, mm. this 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 technique is called repotting. Now, the first thing about repotting is the timing. Yeah, which season do you do repotting? Like example, right now, this month of August, July, August, great time to do repotting. If you do it like November, December, it doesn't work because during winter, like everything, many plants go into hibernation, which means they will remain in that size. There won't be any great growth and all that. They will just, but they will survive till April when the spring starts. Okay. So either you, you don't do repotting. So either you do repotting towards the end of the monsoon before the winter sets in or you do it just before the monsoon. That is, you know, like July, you know, just the rains are just starting, June, July, the rains are just starting. That's the time you do it. Never try to do repotting when the summer is setting in or the winter is setting. In. That's the one point of it. Second point of it is that when you repot, know that the plant will go into shock. Know that the plant will take some time to recover. Therefore, it is very good at least a week or 10 days before to give the plant a little pruning, reduce the number of leaves a bit, take out all the dried leaves, you know, just give it a little pruning so that when you do the repotting, the shock is not going to kill the plant. Yeah. Thirdly, protect the root ball at any cost. When you pull a plant out of a pot, you normally invert the pot, tap it so that the whole thing comes out. Protect that root ball. If that root ball cracks and then you put it into new soil and press it, you have a risk of losing. So repotting is basically something you learn from experience. Actually, plants are pretty hardy. They are not as fragile as you think. But when you really start to treat them like, you know, very rough shot, then, you know, you will do. But I think the key is the timing. Timing is the key. Many people do transplanting like in November, December and all that, you know. Why do you do it? That's a totally the wrong time to do it. Right. Doctor, um, I just want you to tell us a little bit about, uh, of course, you in the main video, uh, you took me through Aparajit, Aparajita, the blue tea, uh, which is so very expensive. You were also mentioning about how a few of your students have gone on to make business models out of growing plants. Can you state a few examples for us, please? Uh, let's see. I mean, um, I mentor uh, people, which you will find in the main video about my mentorship programs. But one of my latest uh, projects was with a mentee by the name Divya Bajaj from Delhi. And with her, we incubated a beautiful way by which you can grow microgreens without, it's like a 100% success rate microgreens uh, project for you at home. So what we did was we made discs of cloth and we have a technique whereby we take 
seeds like chia and we laminate that cloth with the seeds and it comes to you like a product you know it five of these uh, discs in a parcel it comes to you and then you keep this on a terracotta plate you know and the terracotta plate is kept in a saucer of water so the terracotta pot, pot is always moist and upar se from the uh, top you just spray moist to keep it moist you just spray it once a day that's it once a day or twice a day you just keep a little spray it's a sure shot thing whether you know gardening or you don't know gardening you will harvest the most delicious microgreens and it's called uh, i grow her product is called i grow so if you google i grow like an iphone i grow yeah chia discs she calls them it's a lovely product that we have mentor i have mentored for her to create a business model out of something that especially during covid times you can get healthy microgreens loaded with antioxidants keeps your immunity level up there watch out covid you know that sort of message you send across you know so yeah so yeah so these are the kind of things i like to mentor people on where you know not only do you learn natural farming and vedic agriculture and everything but you also go home with a business idea yeah yeah uh for plenty of you who are joining in actually uh by the way if you are interested in home gardening you can actually hit the shop tab and you can pick up indigenous seeds combo kit you just need to click on i am interested and uh, it comes with a kit that has five indigenous seeds it has an instructional video it comes with a seeding tray as well it's very very cool and uh, it would be a great entry into home gardening just hit the shop tab and you can actually check it out um doctor a lot of people want to know if uh, right now is a good time let's say for cultivating these seeds from the kit that we are making available say in north india say in parts of delhi right about now absolutely it's the best time you can do it it's really the best time because from now to the next 3 months see normally all vegetables are maximum like 3 months yeah beans and all are just 60 days palak is like 30 days you know tomatoes you know 75 days you know 80 days and brinjals maybe 90 days yeah that's it so it's about 3 months generally speaking all your crops you know vegetable crops max 3 months so uh, you know like uh, september october november just before the winter sets in it is the best time because what happens is the rain stop yeah the rain stop the humidity is there in the air uh, temperatures are not low temperatures are quite reasonable mm-hmm. and the winter hasn't yet set in yeah so this is actually a wonderful period to do home gardening if you want to start home gardening i would say you know september is like the best time of the year to do it right Amrita has uh, a question we'll just take in a couple more questions Amrita's question is uh, what is the ideal duration of giving fertilizers to our plants uh, can you throw some light on this I am a practitioner of no fertilizers yeah so I you know do it the vedic uh, tradition and uh, really I would not answer that question because I don't practice that method exactly um sir here is known for natural farming 100% and uh, you actually allow bugs also to be part of the way you go about farming as well they are all there for a reason right everything is there for a reason yeah so did you know 97% of the insects that you will see on your house plants or in the farm they are not harmful most of them are beneficial they actually eat up the bugs or the pests which uh, destroy your crop when you spray a pesticide you kill not just the 3% which are harming your crop but the 97% which are either doing no harm or doing benefit for you so to me even weeds i you you've come to my farm and you've seen for me weeds are a part of the ecosystem if i remove all the weeds from my farm and grow just tomatoes it's like i'm waving a flag 
asking all the insects in the world to come to my patch. But if I have weeds growing in my patch, the weeds also provide shelter for the insects. So the insects have got a variety of things to eat. Maybe they will sit on my tomato, but they will also go and sit on many other things, right? So in natural farming, everything is a creation of the divine. So we work with everything. We don't pull out something and say that, no, this doesn't have a place in our existence. So it's a very deep philosophy, natural farming. I, it's not just a technique for growing plants, but it's a very deep journey that takes you inside. Right. Doctor, I think we've covered uh, plenty of questions right from beginners who are gardening to someone who wants to take it to the next level, someone who is looking at potentially uh, doing this on a commercial basis as well. Um, finally, what would you like to say to plenty of folks who have joined us here? By the way, guys, you can also be part of a Flynote WhatsApp group which is for like-minded home gardeners just like you, where we will have plenty of content, where we will have amazing experts just like Dr. Prabhakar Rao come in and uh, you can individually connect with one another as well. Uh, so make sure you stay on the portal for that. We'll throw in more details as well. Uh, but yes, doctor, um, finally, you know, you've, you've dedicated your life to make sure that a lot of plants um, actually see the light of the day and that we don't lose them. You were mentioning how there are actually so many varieties of tomatoes, but we know probably two or three varieties of tomatoes. Um, there is actually a long story to this and what we know as vegetables um, actually has so much more to it than just a skewed vision that we have. Yes, it is so true because, you know, biodiversity of vegetables, it's a part of who we are, you know, it, it represents our heritage. Now, just because hybrids and GMO seeds came in the green revolution and the farmers started to buy seeds every season, the seed keeping tradition disappeared. And when that seed keeping tradition disappeared, local varieties started to disappear, okay? So we have lost almost 98, 99% of the biodiversity that we had just 100 years ago, yeah? Just 100 years ago, if I went to the market, I could take, I could find 408 varieties of tomatoes. Yeah. I would find 432 varieties of beets. You know, the list goes on. We've lost all that. Now, today, we've just got little. Maybe on my website, I've got about 30 varieties of vegetables, maybe around 28 varieties of brinjals, maybe about six, seven varieties of okras. But this is precious little. So unless home gardeners take up this, if you grow in your house a purple bindi, for example, A, guaranteed, you will get your likes on Facebook and Instagram. That's for guaranteed, yeah? But apart from that, you are contributing to the health of this planet by making sure that this variety doesn't disappear. When you put it on your media, people will ask you, can I have that seed? You can make your own seed. Anytime you take seed from Haryali seeds, that's one time only. After that, you make your own seeds from it because they are not hybrid, they are not GMO, they are OPVs, open pollinated varieties. So you become a seed keeper and you share those seeds, your friends will grow it. You have contributed to preserving biodiversity on this planet and that's the greatest service you can do apart from all the other benefits of the eating delicious chemical free food and all that you are doing something really deep absolutely um for everyone who is joining us right now on this webinar guys uh, of course you can actually enter your home gardening journey through a few indigenous seeds that we are making available but that apart, uh, I did mention about a WhatsApp group. We are putting a link to a WhatsApp group right now in the discussion tab. It's going to appear there in no time whatsoever. You can just click on that and be part of our WhatsApp community for home gardeners, where we'll have plenty of discussions, where we'll have plenty of experts join in. And you can feel free to put your thoughts in there as well. The WhatsApp community is being made by Flynote. So make sure you 
just click on that link and be part of it. Um, thank you once again for being part of this lovely discussion, Dr. Prabhakar Rao, absolute legend. Uh, thank you for taking in so many questions. If you could just um, tell people your website, once again, it's haryaliseeds.com. Um, people can be part of your workshop and also uh, check out your journey. Also get a little bit of knowledge about seeds, about indigenous plants and uh, what where we are at right now, the reality of the situation to what it was right now. Could you please uh, tell us your website? Yeah, it will be www.haryaliseeds.com. Hariali Seeds, one word, H-A-R-I-Y-A-L-E-E. -E. Yeah, Hariyaliseeds.com. And you will see the tagline, Seeds for Humanity. Seeds for Humanity. And that's exactly what he practices Thank you so very much once again, sir, for joining us on this lovely webinar. I'm sure if we, the questions never end uh, because it's so very subjective, right? Each one has their own individual home gardening journey, which is so very special to them. Uh, it's a case by case study. And uh, we've tried to answer as many questions that um, really are applicable to plenty of folks who have joined us right now. So I hope we've answered most of the questions. In case we haven't, you can of course join us on a separate WhatsApp group that we have created because we saw so many like-minded home gardeners joining us as part of this discussion. You just need to click on this link that's been given to you. The link has been mentioned in the discuss tab. Just go to the discuss tab where you've been posing your questions and just click on that link and you can be part of a WhatsApp group all thanks to the Flynote team that's being set up right about now. Um, and of course, uh, don't forget to check out the shop tab. You hit the shop tab and you will get your Indigenous Seeds Combo Kit. This kit contains five Indigenous Seeds. Uh, it comes with a seeding tray, a digital video as well. Doctor, would you like to elaborate about uh, these five Indigenous Seeds? It could be anything. It could be tomatoes, it could be okra, absolutely anything. It's a surprise, right? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Because there are, there are, there are herbs, there are vegetables, there are, uh, you know, interesting uh, uh, salads uh, and, you know, but let's keep that. It's, it's, it's something that I put together uh, because I think, uh, you know, in September, this will be a great time to grow all of this. There you go. So you'll need to unravel it. You'll need to find it out by yourself. Uh, just hit on the I am interested tab and uh, you will be able to get your hands on this indigenous seeds combo kit. Just like to reiterate the WhatsApp group again, uh, the link has been placed there. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's the f hyphen n dot link hyphen seeds. That's the WhatsApp group that you can be part of. Dr. Prabhakar Rao, thank you so much for spending your precious time with us. He's a busy, busy man. He's working on so many interesting projects. He's a full-time landscape architect. At the same time, he takes out his time for his passion, for his babies. That's his plants, of course, uh, apart from your wonderful family. I convey my regards uh, to them as well. Please do convey Absolutely. our regards to Absolutely. every one of them. Uh, and once again, uh, Dr. Prabhakar, thank you for this. We need to do this again. Um, make sure you log on to his website. There are plenty of call to actions that we are giving you right about now, but it's been a lovely session. We once again, thank you for giving us such wonderful insights and uh, helping us start our journey into home gardening, which is so very vital in today's world. Everyone needs to do it. It's become so very essential. Uh, it's about being Atmanirbhar as well. So why not grow your own plants, have your own vegetables, and that's the right way to do it. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sridham, and the entire uh, Vibe City team. And uh, really, really, it was a pleasure working with you guys, getting this information across to the public. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yet another webinar filled with so much of amazing insights. I hope you had all your questions answered as well. Keep it tuned. Make sure you hit us up on our Instagram page. Um, our fly note Instagram page is filled with so many rich content and so many rich posts. Of course, on the discuss tab, we are putting up 
the link on how you can be part of the WhatsApp group and how you can get your hands on these indigenous seeds as well. That's it from us. Have a great weekend. Stay safe and uh, have your mask on at all times. Until next time, this is Sriram Surya signing out. Goodbye. Goodbye.